Hi guys, Mark here. Welcome. Today we're tackling another pair accord doglish, this time done in the gaucho style. Our leash begins with a piece of hardware such as a snap hook or a carabiner. We continue with the 8 stranded gaucho braid. This is a round braid that continues for a while then switches into the 8-stranded flat Kumihimo braid for the handle. You can see that both braids have the same zigzag pattern. The ends coming out of our handle are worked back into our gaucho braid in order to secure them and finally over the joint section we tie this decorative knot. The knot is tied using all eight ends. At the start of our leash, we can optionally add an additional decorative knot by introducing an additional four strands. To make the leash, you will need a snap hook or a carabiner for our cordage, we're going to be using Paracord 550. Four strands, each 14 feet long, for a 3 foot long leash. If you're going to be tying the optional decorative knot at the start of our leash, you will need four additional strands of Paracord 550. Each is a foot and a half long. The handle of our leash is done out of a Kumihimo braid. The braid can be done either on a Kumihimo disc or a plate. Either will work. I recommend using at least some of these tools. A lacing needle is pretty much all you need, but a Swedish fed and a spike also come in handy. Before we begin our gaucho braid, a quick setup. Secure your piece of hardware into place. Usually I attach my snap hook onto a loop. Then feed your four long strands through your hardware and even out your ends. So all of the ends need to be of the same length. We now have 8 strands to work with. We separate the front strands to the left, the bottom strands to the right. Then we weave the left strands through the right ones. This bottom strand is going to travel under 2 over 2. The next strand is going to travel under, over to, under. The next one is going to travel over to, under to. The final one is going to travel over, under to, over. So this is the initial setup for our gaucho braid. Tighten everything up. Then we begin braiding. The gaucho braid is done in four distinct steps. Top right strand, under two, over two, to the bottom on the right. Top left strand, over, under two, over, back to the bottom on the left. Top right strand, 
over to under to to the bottom on the right top left strand under over to under to the bottom on the left tighten up by pulling on each of your strands this is very important then continue the same way top right strand under two over two back to the bottom on the right top left strand over under two over back to the bottom on the left top right strand over to under to back to the bottom on the right top left strand under over to under back to the bottom on the left again tighten up pulling on each of your strands so that's our gaucho braid do it for a while then we're going to continue When you reach a sufficient length of your gaucho braid, which in our case is about two feet, we're going to continue with the handle. Grab your disc or plate, insert your leash into it, then arrange the strands in the following manner Something like this. The flat kumihimo braid is done with four moves clockwise, then four moves counterclockwise. So with one color, we begin clockwise. Follow my moves. Then counterclockwise with the other color. Spread apart 
the strands on the sides. Then repeat exactly the same way. So clockwise with one color. Counterclockwise with the other color. To finish our sequence, spread apart the ends on the sides. Then repeat clockwise. Counterclockwise. Finally, spread apart the strands on the sides. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Do it section after section and you're going to start getting a nice looking pattern. We have now prepared a sufficient length of flat braid for the handle. We are next going to form our handle and lock it into place. At this point, either remove your ends out of your plate or continue like this. This is my preferred method since it is a bit more comfortable to do. So you feed both your snap hook and gaucho braid through, like this, forming the handle on the bottom side. So our handle and at the top we have our eight ends, which we are going to work into our gaucho braid. This process is not an exact science and it looks different every time. Since we're going to cover this spliced section with a decorative knot, the splicing doesn't have to look good. So you can play around, you can do mistakes, it doesn't matter as long as you lock your handle into place at least a little bit. We have 8 ends and 8 strands in our gaucho braid. So each end is going to follow a specific strand in the gaucho braid. This first one travels from right towards the left. So let's make it follow this strand here. The next end flows from left towards the right. Let's make it follow this strand here. The next end 
This one, again, kinda flows from right to left. Let's make it follow this strand here. This one again, from right towards the left, we find the free strand, then follow it. This end flows from left towards the right. Let's make it follow this strand here. This one again from left towards the right. This strand here is already taken, so let's follow this one instead. We are at our last two ends. These two are going to follow the last two remaining strands in our gaucho braid. So this one flows from right towards the left. This strand is taken. So let's follow this one here. Our last end, this one naturally flows from left towards the right. So let's make it follow this strand here. Pull on all of your ends to lock your handle into place. So this was one tuck. Let's continue with step two. In step two of our splicing, we want to bring the strands further back up to the front ones. So at about the same spot in our braid. Secondly, we want to alternate the colors of our strands. Green, purple, green, purple, and so on. So this one is going to travel under here. So that we get the green, purple, green, then purple, then the next one is going to be green. then purple, and green. That's our splice.
We are now going to tie a covering knot over the spliced section. Grab the strands of one color, a total of four. Line them up, then do two wrapping turns. One, two. We have four working hands and a total of eight wrapping turns. Grab your first end, pass through your eight wrapping turns in an under one over one sequence. Under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. So a total of four unders, four overs. Under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. Our next end is going to do the same sequence, but starting under our previous end. So under the previous end, then alongside it, doing the opposite to the previous end. So we start under, then over, under, over, under, over, under, over. So the second end travels parallel to the first one, but doing the opposite. Grab your next end, so the third one, which is going to start its sequence under the second end. So under the previous end, parallel to it, doing the opposite. So we start under, then over, under, over, under, over, under, over. Our last end starts its sequence under the third end, so under the previous one, then continues parallel to it, doing the opposite. So over, under, over, under, over, under, over. Our base knot. Grab each of your ends. Remember that they finished with an over. After the over, which passes over a strand coming out of the splice, we pass under the knot to the right. So, over, then under the knot. Over, then under the knot. Over, then under the knot. Under, 
adjust and loosen up your knot a little bit, then we're going to continue. The next four ends, so the remaining four, are going to add a herringbone style to our knot. To begin, grab each end, pass it alongside a strand, coming out of the splice, So under one, coming up, next to a strand coming out of the splice. Follow that strand all the way to the right. Grab the next end, repeat. So under, in order to come to a strand coming out of the splice, then follow it to the right side. The next one, so let's say this end, again under, alongside a strand coming out of the splice, follow it all the way to the right. Our last end, same thing, under, coming alongside a strand, coming out of the splice, follow it to the right. On the right side now, we exit with each strand going over one. We re-enter over two, splitting a pair, then under two, again splitting pairs, over two, under two, and so on, all the way to the left. When you reach this strand, so going over two, coming up to a strand, of the same color, which is passing out of the splice, we are going to pass under our knot, so over to, under the knot to the right. So without exiting the knot here on the left, we pass under the knot to the right. The next strand, exactly the same thing, over to under to, and so on, to the left. Splitting pairs, over 
when reaching our last over 2, reaching this strand of the same color coming out of the splice, we pass under our knot all the way to the right. Repeat two more times. Next end, over to under two, and so on, splitting pairs. Again reaching a strand of the same color coming out of the splice with our last over two, then under the knot, to the right. Our last strand Again, starts over to, under to, splitting pairs. When reaching our last over two, we have reached a strand of the same color coming out of the splice. So over two, then under or not to the right. So our decorative knot. Adjust it a bit, then tighten it up. We begin with strands coming out of the splice. Going through our knot into the ends. Wet the knot tightened up, trim your ends as close to the knot as possible. After trimming the ends, push them under the knot a bit further. Then roll your knot. We are now going to tie a smaller decorative knot near the start of our leash. This one is optional. We are going to introduce a total of 4 new strands. We are going to work them in at the start of our leash in an alternating color sequence.
an alternating color sequence. We have purple green, purple green, purple green and so on. For now, even out all of your ends. We begin by tying our base knot. Grab the strands of one of your colors, line them up, then do a single wrap around. Each of our four ends is going to pass under over, under over. The first one, under over, under over. The second one starts under our first end, parallel to it, doing the opposite. So again, over under over. The third end passes under the second one then parallel to the second one, doing the opposite. So again, over, under, over. Our final end passes under the third end, goes parallel to it, doing the opposite. So again, over, under, over. Tighten up your knot a tiny bit. Then run each of your ends under the knot to the right. So after the over, under the knot to the right. So this strand went under over, under over, then to the right. The next one again, after the over, under the knot to the right. The next one, after the over, under the knot, to the right. The last one, after the over, under the knot to the right. We now work our remaining four strands in the other color into our knot again in the herringbone style. So this end is going to follow this strand coming out of the braid. So under like this, alongside our strand, then follow it to the right. The next one, exactly the same thing. So under, next to a strand coming out of the braid, then alongside it, to the right. The next end, same thing, under, alongside a strand coming out of the braid, then follow it to the right. Our last strand, same thing, under, then follow our strand to the right. On the right, each strand 
is going to pass over to under 2 over 2 then immediately under the knot to the right the next strand same thing over to under 2 over 2 then under the knot to the right next strand over to under 2 then under the knot to the right last strand over to under to over to then under the knot to the right Tighten up your knot, starting at the strands coming out of the braid, going through your knot, into the ends. When tightened, trim your ends Push the ends under the knot a bit Roll the knot. This concludes our tutorial on the Gaucho Braid Paracord Dog Leash. Thank you for joining me and see ya next time.